There we go. Getting solar for the next few hours. And to reserve my spot. Um, yeah. We'll get to that, guys. Hang tight, and we'll cover that in this video. As for numbers here, I'll take that. We're bringing in 20 amps, and battery's fully charged, 13.7 volts here, as I'm doing some editing inside as well. I'm actually only gonna do my editing while I'm getting solar here in the sun, and then, so these two hours, and then I'm gonna go back to enjoying the water down there. Scruffy looking nerf herder. <laughs> solar lights? What the heck? Looks like somebody's occupying this spot. Yep, Mike's here. And our neighbors left here. So this spot was open, so he grabbed it up. And they even left some firewood down here. I don't know how dry that is right there, but yeah. This is a good little spot too. So we got two spots. I do have the chainsaw with me, but all DNR uh, parks have the rule that you can't use any machinery to cut the downed wood that would cause a spark. And that includes an electric chainsaw. So uh, you have to use a, an axe or a saw, like a bow saw, a hacksaw or something like that. But there, there's lots of downed uh, dry wood around here that you can collect still. And uh, I finished getting all my solar. I uh, actually did a lot of editing when I got like unlimited solar. And um, so now, finally, I am going to introduce the newest member of the Nomadic Fanatic team here on the road. I want to talk to you a little bit about why I went with this and not something different. And I want to share with you some of the benefits and how this is going to change and fix a lot of the issues that I've had on the road the last few years. So it is a 2011 used Honda PCX 125 street legal scooter i got it uh off craigslist the 125 is the uh cc engine displacement uh so this thing is rated you'll see youtube videos and people saying they get it up to 67 miles per hour i feel like it pretty much stops for me right at 62 every single time i put the throttle all the way to the max uh, about 62 miles per hour is the top speed but it is highway approved uh, on the back here, I have my license plate covered up. I might be changing that to a custom one or something, but uh, LED tail lights, blinkers on the front. It's got a really nice LED uh, headlight, high beams, again, uh, turn signals there. It does have the foot pegs to travel with another uh, person uh, right up here. And yes, I have done it. Max speed, it looks like 55 miles per hour for about 350 pounds total with two people on it. It has just over 3,000 miles. 3,002 miles. Not sure if you can see that. Speedometer says it goes to 100. Yeah, that's not even close, guys. But yeah, when you turn the key, it's got all fancy, just like, uh, ooh, so fancy, right? Uh, fuel. Let me pop open the fuel here. This is a 1.3 gallon fuel tank. It is tiny. 1.3 gallons. But, Honda says you get 120 miles per gallon, and so far, again, I'm seeing about 102 to 105 miles per gallon on that. So, yeah, it's great gas mileage, considering I get about 7 out of the RV. Uh, but still, with that smaller tank, you're only going to get about 100 miles before you need to fuel up again. So although it only costs 2 or $3 to fill this thing up, you got to do it every 100 miles. Um, the cool thing about having the scooter is the storage space, and this is this is the number one selling point I think that they have against other types of uh, like, like bikes, like dual sports and stuff. So we'll pop open the seat here. Lots and lots of room. There you can see my helmet and my goggles and my stuff in there, but you can fit a full-faced helmet in there. Um, several bags of groceries in there. There's a lot of cargo space in here, and I really, really like that. That's going to be helpful for what I'm using it for as well as a little glove box here to uh, store some stuff. There is currently no auxiliary power. I will be adding one of those so that I can charge a cell phone or have navigation charging, stuff like that, charge the GoPro. I got a really good deal on this scooter. It was listed on Craigslist for 1500 and I talked them down even more from that. Uh, let's see here, other information you're gonna need to know. Um, it varies from state to state, but here in Washington, uh, 
you can go to a lot of these little Honda stores or even any other kind of Teo Teo scooter. You can buy a 49cc Mo scooter. They're really popular, 49cc. Why do they make it not 50? That's because we have this weird law here in this state and several other states that you do not need to get a motorcycle license or motorcycle uh, endorsement, as we call it here, to ride something that is under 50cc. Once you go over that, and again, this is a 125 scooter, those 49cc scooters will barely go 30 miles an hour top speed. This one's highway legal. So you have to have a motorcycle endorsement here in Washington State, which is a three-day class. There's classroom stuff. There's also training. I actually got to use a, a Honda Rebel 250 as mine, and then it's like, you know, I'm not even going to be shifting on the scooter. It's got an automatic transmission. So in a lot of ways, it's kind of boring to use, but the important part is it's really economical for me, and that's the thing here. I always feel like I need to justify myself to the world to kind of explain why I do stuff, but I don't really need to. It's just sometimes it's fun to let you know. On the back of my RV, here, we'll go look. So the Chevy van chassis itself on the one ton has been extended by Chevy and Fleetwood for the motorhome. I think it's extended like six feet. And because of that reason, the hitch on the back that's right here is only allowed 350 pounds max on the tongue weight. Now you can tow up to 3,500 pounds, but the amount of weight and force right there on the end of the chassis that's already extended, you are limited to 350 pounds. Maybe I'd like to get a bigger bike. I can't. There are not very many bikes that total weight are under 350 pounds. There are a couple dual sports that are like 200 cc. A dual sport would be great. And actually, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, later on in life in a different RV or a different configuration, I'm pretty sure a dual sport would be much, much better for my kind of life. Because this, this scooter is just not going to go off-road. I'm not going to have any fun with it off-road. But because of that weight limit, I had to pick this scooter. And this scooter weighs 274 pounds dry. The aluminum carrier here I got on Amazon, it is a uh, Black Widow. This weighs 33 pounds, uh, including every th all, all the pieces you see here. So I'm well under that 350 max. I'm not gonna be putting extra strain on the chassis or the transmission or anything like that. So what do I plan to use this for? Well, a couple different things. First of all, I want to be able to park and leave the RV for possibly more than 24 hours, but not feel like I have to put everything away in the RV if I wanna go somewhere and not limit it to a, a bicycle's range. So the scooter is gonna allow me to, once I get to a new city or something, park farther outside and boondock, and then if there's six or seven places I wanna hit, I just hop on the scooter. It's gonna be really easy. It gets great gas mileage. Um, I think I talked about wanting to get a towed at some time even like to tow a car but it's just me and my cat so there's no reason to ever tow a light car or anything a scooter's gonna work fine and as long as I chase 70 degrees around the country and try to stay out of really wet rainy conditions I won't even be riding it that much in the rain maybe I get somewhere and I run out of bread or milk or eggs or or, or something like that or I need to go to the post office to mail out some stickers again hop on the scooter real quick and just drive and take care of it. Leave the RV at Walmart or wherever my camp spot is. Also gonna be using it to scope out future locations. I might park at Walmart, hop on this guy and go look for the best boondocking spot in that city or something. But also there's this nomad thing inside me that makes me always wanna move. So if I get somewhere like this, we are at the uh, Ho Oxbow campground here. If I wanted to stay here for a week because I loved it, as soon as I get that urge to, oh, I want to move, I want to get on the road, all I got to do is put my helmet on, hop on this bad boy, and go for a little trip. Get that wind blowing in my face, see some new stuff. Got some jets overhead. We must be near an Air Force or something. Or maybe we can call it my midlife crisis, you know, and later on I'll get a bigger bike or something. I'm certainly happy with it. The only thing I'm not happy with is loading it right now. So let me show you that problem. Uh, later on, maybe not in this video, but when I leave this place, you'll be able to see it all mounted up on the back of the RV here. But here's the ramp they provide, and I'll just hook it in like it's supposed to go like that, then we'll stand back. Anybody see any problems with that right there? <laughs> maybe for a dirt bike or another bike with really high clearance in the middle, that would work. But for the scooter, as soon as I drive it up here and get my front tire right there, it's already bottoming out on this section right here. This ramp is way too short. And also I thought that possibly this was too high. 
So I ordered two things on Amazon that are coming. One is a nine foot ramp that is curved and also folds in half to four and a half feet so that I can store it in the compartment. As well as I ordered a drop down hitch receiver that will change this eight inches lower. So the entire thing will still stick out as far, but it'll be eight inches lower to the ground, which I think will really help. Um, in the last few days, what I've tried to do is have a sidewalk over here and also put my two yellow levelers on the other side of the tires. I can't believe this. I've been waiting to film all day. These jets just will not stop going by. <laughs> oh well. But anyway, what I'll do is I'll jack up the tires on this side. I'll drive onto my blocks, which will kick this part up and that part down. And still, it still sometimes bottoms out, but it's really secure. This one comes with an anti-wobble mechanism right there, which helps to not have it going swaying back and forth on this axis here. I ordered another one of those because I'm gonna need it for the other part when that gets there. That's still a week out. So uh, for right now, it's kind of tricky to get the scooter on and off the back, but it does not block the license plate or the lights the tail lights and blinkers it fits in there and again I, I will show that to you later hopefully when I get the new system in place for bringing it around but I do want to go look around I also need to get more bread so I'm going to go find a store so we will fire up the scooter and go for a little trip okay so I'm gonna take the scooter out for a ride yes I have a GoPro mounted to my helmet and guys if I've not preached it enough I'm gonna preach it again record everything any chance you get it gets rid of all of those you know, possible scenarios where the truth may be bended by someone else. All you got to do is point to the camera and say, you can see everything that happened everywhere I looked. Um, I have seen people do moto vlogs where they are constantly shifting their head back and forth and you watch them and you just get sick. Uh, that's one of the problems with mounting it to the helmet. I am actually, every, anytime I ever use this, I am going to edit out all of those jerkiness and try to make it more smooth and enjoyable to watch, or I just won't use it. I don't know, but we'll kind of see. Anyway, I want to take it for a ride. I'm going to wear my helmet. I have a flip down visor right here, but I actually have a, over here, I've got my goggles. This keeps the wind from getting in there and bugging my eyes. And it's UV resistant and leather full finger gloves. The experts will also say wear boots, long pants, and a long sleeve shirt or a jacket. It's not the law here to have that. Yeah, I would probably recommend it, but it's nice and warm and I actually like to feel the breeze. Uh, if a bug hits your arm or your leg, you can feel it. If it hits your cheek, yeah, I understand that. Maybe later on this fall, I'll get a full face helmet. Maybe, I don't know. Right now, this system kind of works. So let's go for a little ride here. All right, you want to hear this bad boy growl? That's it, it's more like a purr. <laughs> And just like that, the scooter is already paying off. No way would I ever take an RV down this weird little road off the highway. And what is it? It's a private campsite. A one person, like one vehicle campsite with a makeshift fire ring here. <laughs> and I mean, it's far enough away from the road. Yeah, this is just like an unmarked, no name. There's the road. So guess what? I'm not going to give you guys the location of this, although people always find a way. You guys, some of you guys are like scary good when I when I say this is my my secret campsite. Nobody's going to know. Like within an hour of posting the video, you'll look below. There'll be GPS coordinates and I'll click on them. And it's like, that's it. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. I'm not calling this a an approved one. It's just kind of dispersed and I don't know who owns it. But anyway, I got to get out to the store, go get some groceries. So we're going to go into Forks.
All right, another perfect example for why having the scooter is gonna pay off. I wanna go look around and find, like, I checked my odometer, I've gone 8.2 miles north on 101, and I'm at Boca Chile State Park, and it right off in here, before you even get to where the campsites are, you got a dump station, which is currently closed, but free drinking water. So now I know if I wanted to fill up my 58 gallon on board tank, or even halfway full, it's eight miles from the camp, fill it up and go back to camp. That would extend out my stay. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think having a scooter is really gonna pay off. I will say this, even just going like 45, 50 mile an hour, when you hit a bug and it hits your cheek or your mouth, or even like flesh or a part of your shirt, it feels uncomfortable. <laughs> Like, yeah, I will say that. So yeah, maybe I will just encourage everybody, most of the time if you can, full face helmet probably, and I will be up upgrading to one of those. And long sleeves and, and, and long pants probably is a probably good idea. I should probably at least, at least preach what, what all the people say you're supposed to do. It's not required by law, but still, I think, I think that'd be a good upgrade for me later. So there you go, one of the benefits of having a bike, a two-wheel vehicle, is you can park up front where your bike actually fits. And this is the first time I'm gonna utilize the opportunity to go in and get groceries. I don't know if I mentioned, but I've had the scooter for a week now, and you guys haven't known about it. Well, maybe you saw it on Mike's channel or James' channel, but anyway. Um, also, I just wanna say, this channel is not going to turn into a moto vlog or scooter vlog type channel, although I am open to some, some suggestions, maybe using the scooter like once a week in my videos, get a full face helmet with a microphone so that I can narrate. I think it might be fun to see some of the other places that I can go because of the scooter. Or maybe even open up a second channel uh, where I could do just scooter type stuff. But anyway, I'm interested in your opinion on how how much of the scooter you'd like to see uh, in my Nomadic Fanatic videos here. Uh, otherwise, yeah, get groceries, head back to camp. So there you go, there's a uh, scooter life, I'm happy. Um, I know it's not as cool as a motorcycle. I'm not trying to be cool, I'm not trying to impress you all. I am just trying to be happier and make things better for the channel and for my exploring as I continue to travel on. So uh, I'm gonna cut this video right now because I fear it's gotten too long. Now you know about my scooter, we can now move on. Uh, my next video will probably start from here because we're gonna have a rager a good fire tonight. All right, guys, see you in a couple days. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.